when it comes to these situations where you have an autogynophile and he shows up in, in a dress and then some people are like, oh my God, why is he doing that? And then the other people are like, what's the problem? He doesn't have a hard on. And I'm like, do we have to measure everything by a hard on? Do you have to stand there with a stonking boner for it to be sexual? Because I think there's two different, <laughs> there's two different dicks, right? I can't believe I do this for a living. There, there's, okay, go there's the dick in your pants <laughs> yes. and there's the dick in your brain. Okay. Where are we today? We're in Earl's Court, London. And uh, you're from where? Ireland. Ireland. Now, we have a very, very special guest today. An extraordinary a guest. You have won the oh. Gay of the Year Award. Gay of the Year, yes. So you are literally the gay of the year. I am the gayest of the gay. Excellent, excellent. Congratulations. Yes. That's quite an honor. Thank you. To meet the gay of the Which year. That's why I thought I'd pair down today. No, you're looking that's you're looking <laughs> extremely gay, I have to say. <laughs> so I'm not usually around such celebrities, so we're gonna oh, have yeah. to we're gonna have to go, you have to take it slow. Okay. So he can stand close to you, you have nothing to worry about. He's totally he's the gay of the year. You're fine. You'll be well, fine. Okay. Am I gonna meet your husband at some point? I hope so. I hope so. Is yeah. he a, is he a nice man? He's lovely. Okay, I want to meet him. And maybe you can help me find one. It could be anybody. In the, it could be anybody over there on that side of the room. Anybody on that side of the room. It makes sense to use the term trans people. Move. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Disagreement. Okay. All right. Grab the board behind you. Grab the board behind you. Uh, we have one on the agree, one on the disagree. I want you to write down the best reason you have for standing on that line. What do you think her best reason for standing on agree is? Ooh, something along the lines of there are people who call themselves, oh, I have to do the fingers, trans and it's important to acknowledge that because that's just the reality of it. Is he correct? Uh, not quite. Okay. Is the reason that he gave better than the one you have on the board? No. Okay. I want you to take a guess at what his reason is. Because trans is a word that means nothing and everything, and therefore we shouldn't use it because it just causes confusion. Is that correct? Uh, it comes close. Close enough for you to say yes? Um, it's, it's lukewarm. Okay, so that means no. Mm, yeah. Okay. Is the reason she gave better than the one you have on the board? I think it's a huge reason. Um, but is it but better? But mine goes deeper. Okay, all right. So I'm going to give you another guess. What oh. is the best reason she has? Why is she on that agree line? Because it's part of respectful debate. Is that correct? No idea. Is that reason better than the one you have on the board? No. Okay, so I'm going to give you one more guess, and then we're going to reveal our reasons. What is the reason? Now, remember, he said you were lukewarm before. Trans is an umbrella term. I'm going to say the very same reason. Um, so you're thinking in terms of linguistics. Like, you're thinking of something in terms of the definition okay, of the word uh, being fixed. Maybe he's saying uh, trans is uh, uh, impossible and therefore shouldn't be used. It's a, yeah. Yeah. It's impossible. Trans is impossible and therefore shouldn't be used. Is that correct? No. I'll go with that. Really? So she got it right? Yeah. Okay, show her, show her and then read it. Dun, 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 dun. It cements the myth of a separate class of people outside of male and female. Okay, explain here. You can put that down and explain what you mean by that. What does that mean? Humans are either male or female. And trans messes with all of that by saying that you can either switch from one to the other yeah. or you that could fall somewhere in between. But even worse, that what I've just said is transphobic. So we had Rishi Sunak, our prime minister, recently saying men are men and women are women. Right. Outrage. Oh, my God. He's denying the existence of trans people. <laughs> so yeah. that's what I mean. I can't do it without anymore. That's what I mean, but it cements this whole idea of this, this mythical class. Because obviously there are people who call themselves trans, but they're still male or female. Okay. Uh, let's share. First of all, did you understand his reasoning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you think the reasoning he gave was better than any reasoning that you guessed? 
Um, he, he said it better. I like the way he said it. I don't agree with it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sh show him yours and then read it. Okay. Uh, there it is. We we need a word to describe your premiership is good. Uh, is it see, dreadful? You see mine. I can't. No, I can't even read my own writing. Uh, we need a word to describe people who have medically transitioned. Quote trans unquote will do. Yeah. Explain that to him. Well, we need words in life to describe different groups of people because we're trying to communicate bigger points than the actual. Like tall and short. Yeah. Yeah. Like male and female. And we need a word to describe people who have medically transitioned. Trans is the closest word right now to describe people who've medically transitioned. I think it should be reclaimed so that it's only people who've medically transitioned. But we need a shorthand. Otherwise, we're going to say people who have medically transitioned. And that is tedious when there's a quick word, which is trans. So do you under not agree, but do you understand what you just said? Very much. Do you agree with it? No. Um, because we, what we've learned now is that whichever way you talk about trans, and you're always going to get called transphobic anyway, because that would be called true scummy or transmedicalist as a position, that you only save that word for people who've, who've had medical interventions. And I think we need to focus on how the word trans is used today, which is like you said earlier, it can mean anything and nothing. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So let's say that we can separate out the lunatics running around calling everybody transphobic. Let's mm -hmm. say that we can just bracket that whole set of behavior and isolate it or divorce it from the phenomenon. Would you still be on the line of disagree for the term trans people should only be reserved for people who have medically transitioned? Yes, because I think a lot of them are part of those lunatics. And if you look at the, the trans rights movement, from as early as the 60s and the 70s, their arguments then are the same as the one being used now, as in, I know what I am, accept me for what I say I am, I want the legal recognition for what I say I am, and I want bodily autonomy. Psychotherapists, who needs them? Doctors, they shouldn't get a say. I mean, this is in documentaries from the 60s and the 70s where they're literally saying these things. So sometimes it's almost like, I think it's like the McDonald's way of looking at things where you want things to be bite-sized and easy. And you're like, well, you know, there's, there's the crazy lunatics, trans, and then there's the old school transsexual who's based and reasonable. But actually, a lot of those people put all the laws in place that have led us to the situation where we are now. Okay. Did you not agree, but did you understand what he just said? Yeah, yeah, I understand he makes good points. Do you, do you agree? Uh, I still feel we need a word. We've got to have a word for, for people, uh, you know, because there has to be a way to differentiate between people so that we can describe what's going on. And if we don't use words and if we try and kind of su suppress them because we don't like what they're doing or we don't like what they represent, it's, it's actually a, a reductive way of going at it. Okay, let me ask you a question. Instead of the word trans, would you be okay if we used an, another word, like a made-up word, like mug mug? <laughs> uh, yes. However, you, you, would I mean, that be if we use mug mug? Well, actually, would that no, be I, sufficient to move you to slightly disagree or even neutral? I said yes too quick. Absolutely, we need clear, clear language, and the language that I use is more of a descriptor than a word. I think it'd be good if we had a word, but then any word we'd get into the same issues that we have now with with this particular word. I think so. I just say men who claim to be women and women who claim to be men. Because I think it's, it's well, that's linguistically cumbersome. There are a lot of syllables and there. That doesn't cover it, because so men who claim to be women could be uh, not have done any medical transition. I want to be able to describe people who've medically transitioned. There's lots of men who claim to be women who haven't done anything, you know, who haven't had any medical procedures. Sometimes you're talking about people who have medically transitioned are carry a heavy medical burden on the body. They're more subject to heart complications or osteoporosis or whatever sexual impairment. Now. Men who claim to be women don't fit that. We need very accurate, specific Men words. Men who claim to be women don't fit that. No, because they don't get any heavy medical burden on the body because they haven't medically transitioned. We need to be able to describe people who have medically transitioned so that we can produce the stats around that to show the, the, the impact. So there the has body. to be some word. Yeah. Very definitely. So, you, so if not trans, if not mug mug, what word, I mean... So if you just took what she said mm -hmm. and you looked at it, there does have to be some word. 
we need a clear language to talk about this, absolutely, and to make a distinction. But then it's a, it's a tricky one. So, so why not have an award, a word with no emotional or moral valence whatsoever? I think you just keep bringing it back to sex because the whole all this language is about distorting and obfuscating the reality of sex. So I would I would rather go with man who, woman who. It's a bit cumbersome, but it, well, it is extraordinarily cumbersome. It's a lot of syllables too. Yeah, but it gets the idea across. So I'm open to suggestions, but at the Mug-mug. moment that's yeah. A woo-woo clown. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, I mean, it's but but it does seem to me to be that her point seems to have. Okay, so how would you? I mean, we we capture other phenomenon linguistically. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't we want to capture that phenomenon linguistically? Oh, I want to. I'm not saying I don't want to. I just so you just I don't like the word trans in particular. Because it it suggests that you can transition from one thing, one sex to the other. So you're you're. So the I, reason you're there is not because you don't think that there's a word, it's that you don't like that particular word. Right, so if you have, say, for example, a heart patient or a man with a pacemaker, what word would you give if you needed one word for that person? What would you make it? I don't know. You just say a man with a pacemaker. If, if you're looking at separating a particular group of people from the ones who've had medical treatment. Treatment. So I'm going to do another claim. It is sometimes useful to police people's language. It is sometimes useful to police people's language. You can stay on the neutral. There's no compulsion to move. Have a think. Have a think. Have a think. Slightly, you're on slightly agree, and you're on agree. It is sometimes useful to correct people's language. Move. Oh, wow, that one word made a huge change. So you're in agree, and you're in... Why are you on agree? Because sometimes you do have to correct. There's no doubt about it. In, in, in the public arena, if somebody is propagating something that's inaccurate, it's, it's your job, it's your duty. Okay, can't the same thing be said about someone who believes trans women are women, period? What if they go around and do the same thing? That's an opinion, as opposed to... Uh, 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 but they would say it's sometimes useful. They'd be standing exactly where you are. Or maybe strong, they'd probably be standing on strongly agree. They probably would be, yeah. And the, they're, they're fully entitled to try and correct my language. They'd be wrong, though. So I'd, I'd love the opportunity to argue with them every single time. Okay, and why are you on strongly agree? Because a lot of people talk a lot of shit. And you think correcting... The, them is going to change your mind? Again, it depends how you do it. And also, you have to choose your battles because if somebody comes up with absolute utter bullshit that you know you're not going to get anywhere. Reed and I, last time we were in London, we were in an Uber, and the Uber driver said to us, well, first he asked, he said, Did you, do you know who started World War I? And I said, no. And he said, it was the Jews. And, and then he said, do you know who started World War II? And I said, no. And he said, well, it was the Jews. Do you, think, do you think offering an historical correction would have been helpful in that context? Do you think that anything I could have said would have made him say, oh, geez, wow, you know, maybe there isn't a vast Zionist conspiracy? You never know if you can think of one particular thing to say, maybe just in the moment, and especially something that's kind of funny and unexpected, people's thinking can okay. switch. Okay, so go back to the neutral. I want to I wanna drill down on this because I find this interesting. Correcting language is required to help people bring their beliefs in alignment with reality. Correcting language. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes correcting language is required. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you still agree and you still strongly agree. Can you think of a time where it's correcting language wouldn't help? Can I think? Yes. Give me which example. Um, I've been in in the examples where you're um, in, let's say again, in a public arena, you're in a hall and everybody is against you. And if you go in too far and too strong, Mm -hmm. they'll turn on you, like literally, physically, or certainly in a very heavy way. Okay. That you're, you're on a hiding to nothing. Okay. So can you think of three words 
either of you or both of you, three words that people use that hoodwink them into having a certain worldview, that if they change the definition of those words or they were more thoughtful about those words, then their view of reality would be changed. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, yeah, t trans women are women. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's one. Definitely. Am I looking for more? Yeah, you, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the pressure off of you. Can you think of any? The first two words that came into my mind were cis and trans. Okay, give me, explain cis. So, cis is a word that originally comes from Latin, and it's used to indicate that something is on the same side of, of something else. So that's why we have words like cis alpine, which means it's on a particular side of the, the Alps. There is cis lunar, which describes the space between the Earth and the Moon. But now, the gender ideologues are using it to, to talk about humans and our identities. So in their world, a cis man yeah. is a man who identifies with being a man biologically. So the very fact that the category exists means that there must be a category in opposition to it or it wouldn't exist. So accepting the existence of the category accepts the status of trans. If you go along with cis, well, this is the fake binary that they try to foist on us. So we're always told that if we say humans are either male or female, that we're operating in some kind of, kind of colonialist, white supremacist, you know, binary. But they give us the binary of cis and trans. And I used to be friends with, you know, blokes who thought they were women. And we got on really well as long as I played along with all that. And once we had a chat and this guy says to me, oh, yeah, that's because you're cis. And when I didn't use that for myself, he got really pissed off. Interesting. So it's, okay. about, it's about allegiance, that language. Okay. I'm, I'm just curious, very quickly before we do no, another claim, what role do you think language plays in the culture war with regard to gender and trans issues? Is it like a minor role? It's crucial. It's huge. Language is where this all started. It, it was like the gateway. And there's a quote by some clever philosopher person, something about if you control language, then you control people's thoughts. Mm. I don't remember who it was now. But. Well, Wittgenstein said, like, if the limits of my language are limits of my world, something s similar to that. Or Orwell also had something mm -hmm. similar. Okay, it is possible for a male <laughs> to claim to be a woman without claiming to be female and mean something clear. Move. <laughs> wow, very strongly. Just Wow, two people. Okay, so now... We have the fun part of the game. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, this is when it gets... I'm going gonna, um, I'm gonna to give you the... Um, no, you know, he's the gay of the year. He's going to go. Oh, okay. Heads or tails? Heads. Heads. Heads it is. Okay, so you have a choice. You can either stay in the strongly disagree line or move to the strongly agree line or kick her to the strongly agree line and argue the opposite side. Which do you want to choose? You're the winner of the coin toss, in addition to the other accolades you've... <laughs> <laughs> you've amassed. <laughs> Nazi, fascist, supremacist. Um, I feel really strongly about this one, so I'd like to argue it. So, but oh, okay, so you're going to kick I her really over there? All right, all right. So, okay. So, Reed, pull up the quote. I feel bad about that. No, no, don't, don't feel bad. You won the coin toss, fair and square. It is possible for a male to claim to be a woman without claiming to be female and mean something clear. So I want you to think for a second before you go, because I'm going to ask him, but just think about it because you're mm -hmm. going to have to argue the other side. Like what, if someone believed that, what would their reasoning be? Okay, so explain to her what your reasoning is for that. This whole thing about disconnecting woman from female takes away what destroys the word woman and female. This is where everything falls apart. Now, there are some men who say, I acknowledge that I'm biologically male, but I live as a woman. That 
always goes down to reinforcing stereotypes about what a man and woman is supposed to be. I take real issue with that because that stuff has been making my life hell for decades. Okay. All right. P pause on that for a second. I'm going to com come back to some consequences in a second. So if someone believes that, why would they be, what, what would their reasoning be? Um, I think they are trying to allude to the fact that they're presenting as a woman, that they're, they're out in the world presenting as a woman, and yet they're telling everybody as they present as a woman. It's a, it's a kind of a, a two-pronged kind of presentation. Their words are saying, I'm born male, but I'm presenting as a woman. It's, it's a complicated way of being, but they would argue that is what they're doing. And some people are very complicated. It's almost like some people say, you know, I'm, I'm Indian, Pakistani, Irish, American. And you go, yeah. oh, right, are you? You know, you're, you're lots of things. You right. know, we contain multitudes. So they're, they're, they're presenting their entire history as fast as they can. Oh, okay. Does any of that have to do with whether or not they're passing? Yeah, I would say, imagine a, a person who's biologically male in a bar and actually presents really well as, as a woman, if you follow me. If they pass Like a really, lady boy, I'm thinking. Yeah, of. yeah, really, really feminine. I put him in a bar because I was right. thinking the same as you. Right, Yeah. Right. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I think, therefore, you know, the, the, some people have argued, like, you're lying with your body, if you follow me, that he's, yeah. you know, he's effectively lying with his body and therefore he might need to tell people in the right context, let's say he was going to go to bed with you, he might need to say, I'm male. I, I was up, I was f f following you until the lying part came. Ex oh, explain. lying with your body. Yeah. As in his, his, his body is, is giving, well, our bodies present us and he's presenting as female. So his, his body is, is, is presenting a message, which up until like really 10, 15 years ago, everybody's bo body presented themselves and we had no way of presenting ourselves in a different manner to how we were born hmm. because medical science hadn't caught up. But especially among women, women who take testosterone really look very, very male. And so they're effectively, nobody would know that they were born female and nobody would know that they would have a vagina. They just, you would not know. So their, their communication of their body is a it's a message interesting because i i ask that because i think when i think lying it seems that you need a linguistic structure to lie okay i'm not saying that's true or yeah communi yeah. well yeah some communicating would be deceiving deceiving would be better maybe deceiving yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. okay so what would it take for you to move one line to the disagree you seem pretty, pretty i will calm. not move on this Absolutely not, uh, because this, this is the heart of it all. This What's is, the heart of it all? Trying to separate. I mean, look, doe, a deer, a female, deer, you know, that's the word for a female, that, of the female, of the, the deer species. What you call the deer, deer altogether, deers and stack. What's the actual deer. word? I don't deer. know, there's a word. Yeah. Like you have bovine, you have cows, you have bulls, you know? Yeah. And with, with every, every species of, of animal and plant and whatever, there's a a separate name for the male and the female. Equally with humans, we have the word woman for the female of the human species. This is the word that humanizes the female instead of just talking about female, because you could talk about a female dog or a female cat or a whatever. This is the word for humans who are female. And they're trying to take that away and say, now I can have it for myself because I'm performing woman, you know, with surgeries, with hormone treatment with the way, you, I mean, you don't even need that. You could do, okay. you could use dress, makeup, mannerisms. So you're not willing to move? No, no, hell no, no, absolutely hell no. Okay, so let me ask you a question, so. And I think the people that do, that pretend to be so-called allies in these gender wars, they don't make any sense. So for example, you have Buck Angel who says, I, I acknowledge I'm female, I'm female, I'm female underneath this all, but please call me he. Doesn't, she doesn't force people to do that, but she says, I really would appreciate it if you did. Why? Because I tried so hard. That's the argument. I tried so hard. You tried so hard to do what? She tried to, I mean, oh, I have massive issues with Buck. Okay, hold, hold on, let's not go there, Joe. Hold on, because I'm, I'm trying to, so let, let's say that 
she was a genuine believer over there, Stella. Let's say that. Oh, yeah. And then, and I walked over there and I said, what would it take for you to change your mind? And she said nothing and explained her position. What would you think about that? If literally nothing is willing to change your mind? Well, I'd want to know more about, first of all, how she arrived at that position. Um, yeah, that's a tricky one. Would it be cause for concern if she were absolutely, if someone was, in this case, Stella was absolutely unwilling to change her mind? Well, if it's on that side, yes. <laughs> so it matters what the conclusion is then. It matters what the conclusion is. Well, it depends what, what is it that you're arguing for. I mean, I'm arguing for reality here. I'm not arguing for some kind of weird idea or, or delusion or, you know, all this, all this gender crap. I'm, I'm just pointing out what is, right? That's the car, that's the tree, that's the building. You're a man, you're a woman. I'm not trying to uphold something. Um, okay, Stella. Any other thoughts, either on what he said, he concluding thoughts, or on why someone would be standing on this line? Um, I guess people who are standing on this line are on the position that they have gone to great lengths to to present in a different way. It's their life's work, and I think they have made decisions that impact society, and that they probably have you know, huge challenges in life and they probably need an awful lot of help, but it has created an awful lot of confusion. And some people just think it's just be nice to me because I've really tried and I'm actually f flailing here. And I'd say that's where they'd go. All right. All right, go back to neutral. Before we do this one, let's define autogynephilic. Well, Ed, it is a male who has an erotic fixation on being a woman. It is okay for autogynophiles to wear female typical clothing in public. Okay for autogynophiles to wear female typical clothing in public. Move. Are you thinking? I am thinking, yeah. Take your what time. What does neutral mean as such? Neutral either means you don't have a, a, a strong opinion either way or maybe you don't want to move and you haven't thought about it. We were actually thinking of getting another one that says, I have no idea. So you, we can- It's not, you, I have no idea. I suppose um, it's okay. It's it, 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 female typical clothing. I'm just thinking of what sort of clothes they're wearing, but I'm going to go to slightly agree. Okay, so two or you want to try, why, why, why you want slightly agree? Because these clothes could be any women's clothes. It doesn't necessarily have to stray into very explicitly sexual stuff. Right. And if you, like, you wouldn't know if a, if a so-called gender non-conforming man is walking down the street in, in a dress that he's, I mean, because you don't always know, right? Who, who is the AGP and who isn't? And then you get to this whole issue of how do you police that stuff? I do think there's certain uh, events or occasions where if an AGP was to show up in sexually explicit or something inappropriate, that you would be able to say, well, excuse me, put something else on. Okay, so help me understand this. What is the problem with, to borrow a term from the island here, a bloke wearing a dress in public, not a kilt, like a, a mm -hmm. flowing female dress in public? What, what's the problem with that? Uh, well, I stood next to one once in like a summer dress uh, in the summer at some point, and we'd never met. But knowing that this person, that this man has been very open about being an AGP, I didn't start going, well, wait a second, is this dress now part of your whole thing? But what would the, help, help me understand, what is the problem though? Like, what is the harm in that? Who, who's, who's harmed by that? I don't have a problem with a, a, an autogynophile wearing a dress in public. So either you should either you good. should be on strongly agree, or there's some other piece of clothing you don't want them to wear in public. Um, no, yeah, they're, like if they were wearing sexually explicit clothing in a children's event, no, I don't think so. So if you get super narrow and you talk about kids, I'm, I'm trying to do this. Without, I think without, the drag screen core. Is, 
story hour. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's say, you know, somebody wearing a, a, a very extremely exp sexually explicit clothes. I, don't, I, I just don't think it's appropriate. I don't, I don't actually think anybody should wear sexually explicit clothing around children. I think it's icky for the kids and it's just imposing sex. So you're, you're, the reason you're on slightly yeah. agree as opposed to agree or strongly agree is strictly because of children. If if the, if the, thinking, if the, yeah. if there were a retreat or a beach or something, in which it was an eighteen or over beach, yeah. then and then some guy wanted to wear a, a bikini, yeah. then you, you you what line would you be on? And there was again no 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 one under eighteen. And yeah, I'd be cool with that because you you said a specific place, a beach, a venue, an event. Well, if it's out and about in the public arena where anybody could, then nah. It is possible for an autogonophile to wear female typical clothing in public without imposing a sexual act on the public. Move. Without imposing a sexual act on the public. Take your time. Take your, I know it's a tricky. This is this is why we do spectrum street epistemology. This is not easy. Is it possible for an autogonophile to wear female typical Clothing in public without imposing a sexual act. Hmm. Yeah, where are you going to go? Oh. You can stay on the neutral if you want. Okay, you slightly disagree and you agree. Why do you slightly disagree? When it comes to these situations where you have an autogonophile and he shows up in, in a dress and then um, some people are like, oh my God, why is he doing that? And then the other people are like, what's the problem? He doesn't have a hard on. And I'm like, do we have to measure everything by a hard on? Do you have to stand there with a stonking boner for it to be sexual? Because I think there's two different, there's two different dicks, right? I can't believe I do this for a living. There, there's, okay, go ahead. there's the dick in your pants <laughs> yes. and there's the dick in your brain. Meaning yeah. the, the idea of getting off on stuff and, and you, you may be getting off on it without physically showing it. Oh, okay. So, back to the question. Yeah. It, if it's a full-blown AGP, then there's always a sexual element to it. And that, and implicit in that assumption is it is bad. It is bad if you do it in public because then you make the public part of it. Okay. You're on the uh, okay. agree line. Tell well, us why. Well, I suppose the key point there is full-blown AGP, because I think somebody could be AGP, autogynophile, without um, every single action that they do is autogynophilic. So some people think once somebody has autogynophilia, everything they do is a sexual act. And every action they make is some sort of sex act. Well, I think they can put it away for a while. I've, I've met plenty of people and I can usually recognize when somebody's you know, thinking secret sex thoughts. And um, how's he doing? How's all the time. Doing? All how's the time. Doing? How's he doing? I keep seeing him. <laughs> I, I know, I keep I seeing him peer all. over at Travis. <laughs> I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Yeah. I think um, that people can be, you know, so an autogynophile could be in the middle of thinking secret sex thoughts, but they also might not be in the middle of secret sex thoughts. And I think more importantly, we have to think of society. And how are we going to operate in society? We've seen what happens in Iran. We've seen what right, happens right, when right, you right, start right. policing clothes. And so where, how exactly are you going to police clothes? How exactly are you going to do this? Because does that mean a man can't wear a satin shirt? Does that mean a man can't wear a nice girl's T-shirt and jeans? What exactly, where are we going with this? Can a man wear longer clothes? Hair, yeah. can a man a wife wear a dress like this? Yeah, like there's so many things we're suddenly going to wear an earring. There's so many things. Wear a ponytail. Yeah. He's checking all the boxes. He is checking all his, his crazy Those shoes. shoes. <laughs> we won't wear yeah. the shoes. But it's a good point. It is a good point, yes. Like in my videos, I, I do these parody song videos about this gender stuff, and I dress up as many different characters. And now with this happening, like I have a dress, and I'm like, oh, if I put this dress on now, even if it's for a video to show a character, are people now going to go, oh, well, maybe Menno's a little bit AGP? Well, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah they are. And this is where... But you took issue with, with Phil Lilly wearing a dress. Oh, and you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, where, where were you with that? 
because my Ex wait before you actually explain the Phil Illy thing. So I held a conference and it was a very difficult conference to hold because it was in a state where you'd have guns in America, in Colorado. And we had a huge security presence and it took us months and months and really expensive conference to hold. And it was a massive level of effort. We had four stages to our security. It was a huge amount of emphasis on security. It was a very difficult conference to run, but it was a very successful conference. And afterwards, it was days after, like, you know, there was a picture posted on Saturday, one of thousands of tweets. And... Um, one of the pictures was Laura, who is actually very transgressive, but she's a very powerful woman, detrans woman. And she, she, she would be very non-conforming in all sorts of ways. And she was posing with uh, an autogynophile, self-identified autogynophile, who identifies as a man who uses male toilets, who was another participant in the conference. And days after, so the Wednesday after the Saturday, suddenly the UK Twitter blew up, it was very much driven over in the UK and the conference was in America. And it was an extraordinary pylon. And um, Pylon who? On Genspect, my organisation and on me. And it was on Phil and on Laura, who got a really hard time. And it felt it was incredibly punitive and purist when actually the great gains that had happened in the conference got massively dismissed. We launched a gender framework, which is a non-medicalized uh, approach to gender, which prioritizes sex over gender. And that all got dismissed so that many people who are already key figures could say their very well thought out, very intellectual comments about why it's not appropriate to ever let an autogynophile in public at a conference. And that felt to me like something out of Iran. It felt something that was very, very punitive. And as I immediately said, well, if we had told him to leave, he would have sued us and he would have won. So where do we go from there? What was the reasoning for wanting him to leave? Because he was an, a self-identified autogynophile. So? And he was wearing a dress. So? Uh, I'm very interested to hear. Okay, go, go back to the neutral, please. So, next claim. It is okay for AGP's autogonophiles to appear at future Gen Spec conferences wearing dresses. Move. You can stay on the neutral. You can totally, this is a free island. Everybody is welcome to move or not move. It is okay for AGP's to appear at future Gen Spec conferences wearing dresses. You're both on slightly agree. Why? You can't stop them from doing it, I guess. Although my issue with what the blue dress was about yeah. was the fact that one thing you point out is how much work went into that conference and how hard it was to put together and how much was discussed. And all that he shows up wearing that tells me he didn't care about that and he wanted to center himself. Not because the dress, because the dress wasn't particularly sexual, but it was like, how would you describe it? Like a, an evening ball gown yeah. type sort of thing. Wacky. And he went there to say, look at me, not I respect this space. That's my issue with it. That's number so one. So let me, let me ask you, yeah. go ahead. I'm dying to get in there. Yes, he did. And you know what? It was such an interesting conference. He didn't get any attention. It was so interesting, there was so much intellectual content going on that he barely got a look in. And then days later, he probably had the best month of his life right. with all the attention he got. But at the conference, he was not um, he was not a subject of conversation. He wasn't a main event. There was a lot of things going on. He wasn't important. So if it gets back to my a point I made earlier. If more and more people did this, like if it were ubiquitous that a small number of people did this, then it would be normative by definition. And if it's normative, then there'd be no, like nobody would say anything about it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do think in fairness, I've, I've spoken to so many boys who've, who've issues with their gender. And I do think in fairness, I think what about the boys? I remember in the eighties and the boys who liked wearing makeup and the silky stuff and stuff. In fairness, I'm not that person, but they really do enjoy it. I, I would like to see a world. I know some people won't agree with me, but where boys could wear dresses or eyeliner and makeup and high heels and 
silk satin clothes without it feeling transgressive. We women can wear whatever we want. I'd like men to be able to wear whatever they want. It feels fair to me. And and I'm, I'm curious because it's related in the conversation it's come up, children, public, appropriate, harm. Let's reset the line real quick. Reset the line. Mm-hmm. Um, consenting adults, meaning people over the age of 18, should be able to do whatever they want sexually, in bed, in private, move. Whoa. That's why you're playing Spectrum Street Epistemology. <laughs> this is, okay. People can do in private, sexually, whatever the hell they want. Well, yeah, move. Okay. Uh. Okay, I'm a little surprised by by this movement here. I would not have anticipated it. Why are you slightly disagree? All right. <laughs> I have noticed this great god of consent as, as being a presumption that everything is fine so long as adults consent. I don't buy it. Imagine if... And these cases have happened where somebody consents to so much sadism that they die, but they're consenting to it because it's actually a turn on for the sadist and it's uh, uh, some sort of turn on for the person who's receiving it because they're a masochist. I don't think consent is the... um, the rule of God. I don't think, and I'm not, I don't believe in God, but I don't think consent is the only thing that we have to worry about. Wow, there's a lot there. Yeah, I say, have sex, enjoy sex <laughs> with someone who'll have you go fill your loving cup kind of thing. Um, don't hurt other people. Um, what I mean, they want to be hurt? what if they, what if they want? Well, and she's talking about not like, you know, some light spankings like Reed and Travis like. <laughs> she, she's talking, <laughs> she's talking, about, you know, hardcore actually, like, breaking people's arms and eating Um, them and stuff, like, actually eating them. I think I'm quite innocent and naive, even though I'm gay of the year. I know, I know, I was going to say. What I think about is more more just when you talked about consent is, is do people even know what they're consenting to or why they're consenting to it? Are people having the kind of sex that they want to be having or do they sometimes go along with it because they think that's what the other person wants? What's Which wrong with also, that? Sorry? What, what's wrong with that as long as no one's being permanently injured? Well, I'll give you a, an example. Okay. Uh, I used to meet up with a local gentleman and he would hit my face. And I went along with it because I didn't want to spoil the moment or I didn't want to let what, the man down kind of what's thing. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with what? With him hitting me or me? Well, what's if, wrong with it? if he was hitting you and you didn't like it, you should have just said, you know, use a safe word to say, like, don't hit me. Yeah, and I wasn't like that. So I went along with it because I didn't value myself enough to stand up for myself. And it makes me wonder how many young guys, especially like gay guys just coming into London, how many of them go along with things because they feel they have to do it, but they don't really want to do it and they walk away from it. Even a slap in the face, it's not damaging. You don't end up with a bruise necessarily, really but not. you feel you feel shit as you walk away from it. And do these guys then have, like I didn't at the time, do they have the sense to go, but this makes me feel bad, why am I going back? But you're disagreeing with yourself. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, but that's, that's... So people have the sex you want, yeah, but it's about having the sex you want. So the question was... Can, should can consenting people, adults be able to do whatever they want in the bedroom? Well, yeah, and if one doesn't like it, then they need to walk away. Yeah. But it, might, ta- it might take time. That's the whole idea of consent. Yeah, but there is, there is a vague area there where people are going along with stuff that they don't really want to do, I think, but that's just based on my own experience. And they don't have the sense to say stop or I don't like that or mm, yeah. maybe not. Uh, right. Can I just add, sometimes you should just do the right thing, whether or not it's consent or not. You just do the right thing. All right. Well, thank you today. I hope you had, did you have fun today. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. Did you have thank fun? You. Yeah. I feel even gayer than before. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> hey, Travis, do you want to...